In this lesson, we'll take a look at another way that we can adjust topology and ultimately resolution in getting our assets from ZBrush into Mari. So in the last lesson, we took a look at using Decimation Master, and that took our model and it triangulated it down so we could get it into Mari. But the model at that state wasn't really usable for anything else. So there is a way that we can also adjust something that we've already done in ZBrush and have it affect the ultimate topology of the model. So most of the time in ZBrush, our models are going to have multiple subdivision levels. So they'll have a lower level with base model. And then as we go through and subdivide it, we'll sculpt on it. So if we take a look at the ground here, you can see here's level one. And as we move up the subdivision levels, we get more and more polygons until we get up to the highest level. And ultimately, this is the, the one that we want to be able to paint on in Mari. Um, so you could decimate it, and then all you'd get would be this piece of geometry, but in a, a triangulated state. We can also affect the underlying base geometry in order to get a different result. If we take a look at the wireframe of this ground, you can see which way the edges are going. And here at the highest level, you can even see how the edges don't necessarily reflect the actual shape. So here we have an edge that's not actually defined by an edge. Here we have a big piece of rock that's pulled up, but it's still defined just by these uh, grid of polygons. Here we have polygons that are slid back and forth, so a lot of stretching going on. If we go down to the lowest level, you can see this even more drastically. Here we have some really stretched polygons. Here they're really packed quite tightly, whereas up at the top they're really, really large. And again, here's this edge that's not really defined by an edge at all. And so this topology isn't really optimal for the shape that we ended up with. And this be this comes about because when we start modeling, we don't necessarily know exactly what shape we're going to be creating. So we create a base piece of base geometry, and then we begin sculpting at higher levels. So the topology doesn't always flow the right direction. So what we can do is rebuild this lower level. So let's take a look at the resolution right now. So right now, this ground plane at the base level is about 9,700 polygons. And then if we take it up all the way to the top level, you can see that it's about two and a half million. So we want to reduce this upper amount by reducing the amount at the base because it's determined as it subdivides it, uh, that determines the resolution at the top. So first thing we need to do is go down to the lowest level. And then a very important step is to freeze our subdivision levels because we do want to keep all the resolution and all, all the detail rather that we've created at those higher resolutions. We want to be able to keep that and freezing our subdivision levels will do that for us. So it's going to keep all those higher subdivision levels in memory, uh, but it's going to allow us to do some operations on this particular level. So now we're going to come down to Z Remesher, still in the tool palette. Here we can decide how many polygons we want to create. So we could do, do a kind of a, a relative button here. So we could say half of what it currently is, or we could say about the same amount or double uh, the polygons, or we can put a number in. And so here under target polygons, if we unclick those, we can actually put a number. So it's at 9,700. Let's say we want to stick to about 5,000 polygons. So I'm just going to put five in here. And so this is in thousands of polygons and this target polygons count. I'm going to go ahead and leave everything else as is. because We don't really have any separate polygroups or anything like that. And so I've just set this to five and I'm going to hit Z remesher. I want you to take a look at the edge flow of this and how it changes. So go ahead and hit Z remesher. Should happen pretty quickly. So now what you've got is you've got geometry that is much more optimized for the shapes that we have. You can see we have some loops here creating uh, this hill. We don't have those stretched polygons anymore. Here you can see that those polygons are adjusted. We don't have those tight ones right in here anymore. Everything is nice and spaced out. At the edge of this rock formation, we now have an actual edge that flows along that direction to give us our shape. So we actually have fewer polygons, but you can see they actually match up a lot more with the shapes that we have. So they're really, really uh, well uh, laid out in terms of the shape that we have. So the next thing to do would be to get the high resolution detail back into uh, and the levels back into this model, because this is the lowest level, remember. So if we, if we come back here, let's just check the resolution really quickly. So it's at 5,400. So it's not going to go exactly to 5,000. It's going to go by the needs of the geometry, but it can get you close. So we went from 9,700 
of the base to 5,500 and actually it looks better. So now come back into geometry and all we have to do is unfreeze. So turn this button back off and this is going to take a little bit longer because it's going to project the geometry back into those subdivision levels. So I'm going to let this go ahead and think. You can see your progress up at the top and then come right back once it's done. All right, that actually didn't take too long. It was actually about it's probably 20, 30 seconds or so. And so you can see here, if I turn, let's turn off our polyframe and unmask here. You can see the detail is still there, all that sculpted detail that was in the ground. We're at level five now. If we come down to level one, you can see this is the, the new geometry that we had that we created with our Z remesher. All the subdivision levels are there, but now they're using that new topology. But all their sculpted detail is still there, which is really, really cool. So now if we go in at the highest level, you can see our polygon count has gone down to 1.3 million. So uh, we've gone from about 2.5 million to about 1.3 million um, polygons, which is a great uh, way to reduce. And you could even reduce it even further probably with this ground plane. It's going to be a lot more forgiving uh, in some of these areas as far as the number of polygons. So if you wanted to, you could reduce it that way as well. And then you could just take this geometry in this form. Uh, you could you know, have your UVs on the low res. Now this is a, a new base, so you would want to do this first and then do your UVs on the new base. Uh, and then those UVs can be used for this high resolution mesh. So then you could take this mesh and export it out and use it and uh, save on a lot of polygons that you could use somewhere else and, and be able to bring in more geometry. Okay, so this is just another way to reduce our geometry and really optimize the topology. And I think it's a good, even if you're not trying to necessarily reduce polygons, it, it's often a good thing to do just because, you know, at the beginning, you don't really know what it is that you're making. But once you sculpted it, you kind of know, okay, these are the landmarks that I want to have. Then you can go back and optimize your base model to take advantage of that and, and really make your scene more efficient. So now that we've taken a look at um, Decimation Master and also Z Remesher to adjust our topology and resolution, let's take a look next at creating and using UV layouts in ZBrush, something very important for working in Mari. So we'll do that next.